thing about this invention is it's invented by cars in the nose, you know? Now that you meet your name so well known against managers, well, where the audience is. Aye, uh, we could be pursuing it quite hard. We should be pursuing it hard, man. Where are you off to? The theatre. <laughs> Mr. Jerome has been kind enough to offer me a recommendation. The young lady, Miss Mary Amstel, was in a recent touring production of this and may be available at short notice. I thought her play was cow. Uh, Mr. Tool seemed to think so, but I wasn't too pleased with the young lady he had in mind for the second female. Lady. Should we not leave the casting to Mr. Tool? I think he should be happy that a, he has an author who's willing to help him in this way. He's meddling so and so, Jenny. How are we ever to get on with the writing if you're forever out? And now, you're proposing to become a casting agent. What exactly do you know about the qualities needed in an actor? Well, the theatre has always been my first love. Schoolboy dramatics and dumb trees. <laughs> I am taking Miss Amstel to supper after her evening show. That's why you've polished the boots. No, oh, yes, that's why I polished them. <laughs> oh, you should see her performance for Chronicle. She's, well, she's beautiful and graceful, and she captures the attention of the entire audience as soon as she appears on stage. I've um, been thinking long and hard about this, and I've decided to offer her the part of second female lead in what London. So, you've seen her performance, you've decided already there's no need to be taking her out to supper, man. These girls are easily able to read more into that than a man might intend. <laughs> No, 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 no. You mistake Miss Ansel entirely. She is a most accomplished actress and, and very delicious. And a flirt. Oh, don't confuse the women with the character, McCoy. It's not me that's taking anyone out to supper. Jane, in all the success that we've had recently and over the last two or three years, it's it good to command the wrong way. I don't know what you mean. You're going to be late for my appointment. So wait. And that's the point I'm trying to make, man. They all wait for the famous Mr. Barry. You're letting the success go to your head. There are pretty women, and clever women, and just women on the make. On the make? And what do you mean by that? Maybe getting on in life, I suppose. Maybe not being content with the hand the good Lord dealt coming to London like you did yourself, to see what they can garner for their careless society. Careless? Well, lacking in care for what? Oh, come on, man, I've got a real, real tingle for this one. I suppose I'm thinking about the familiarity of what makes you careless for the things you've got. Makes you think that they'll always be there, that you don't need to water the plants because they're always growing, but you haven't noticed that a drought arrived. Do you mean to distract me? Well, you listen to me, you fool! Enough! I have waited for a long time to get the attention of the women that you have just described. And I don't think I'm going to let this opportunity pass me by. Women aren't the same as men. They can't like you for the genius alone, that's the evil of it. A woman wants to find a man there and all. A man, Jamie, of flesh and blood who will love her and who will make love to her. The genius only wants to find a medium for his expression and lacks that male dimension. I don't understand you at all. But look how many of my friends have set up homes together and lovely little nurseries. Men of, of, of wit, clever men, men like me. They're no just like you, Jamie. How long do you think Delmore waited before he let Elizabeth know his intentions were entirely dishonourable, as any young woman of great blood and womanly spirit might require. I am sure Thomas Gilmore's intentions were honourable to a fault. Oh, he's an honourable man. There are many honourable men, but they also have their duties as husbands. That will come to every honourable man when he has to the meal. I am perfectly well acquainted with the duties of a husband, as you so delicately put it. <laughs> Watching the cats in the autumn fields is no quite the same as preparing yourself for the marriage bed, Jamie. I'm 
lay them behind in this. What if, what if Miss Anstel wants more? Aye. What if Miss Anstel wants more? How do you cope with the sweat, blood, and perils of childbed? How will you prepare yourself for the child to the ailments that carry the infant? Oh, how will you stand the tears? Jamie does what he normally does. Jamie does what sits Jamie. No, man, you can't do this. Could, could you not find yourself a comfortable wife of less than children already? Then she could just add you to her food and, and leave us to get on with the writing. <laughs> 